Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Super Fantify. This being a show where we talk about TV shows of the supernatural, fantasy, and or science fictional genre. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the series finale of The Outpost. And I say that with such a question mark is because I didn't know this was a series finale. To be fair, I've been watching this on the CW app, so I haven't been seeing any promos at all. So I wasn't even aware of, like, this whole thing. But regardless... A great series finale, regardless. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. So, obviously, we're picking up with the conversation between Aster and Talon. Aster wanting her to uh, be the one to open the portal, but it's like, why don't you? It's like, you know, it's like he can't deny, like, once all the others are around, he'll never be able to break his... It's not about willpower, he says. It's just the fact is, uh, when they're all together, they're of one mind and one purpose. And there's no going against that because it's in their very nature of what their species are. Which we never really got too much of, but I guess like they are the last of their species in parallel to like the last of the Black Bloods in that regard too. Which, interesting, since obviously the Black Bloods do come from at least one of uh, the quote-unquote, well, this, I was about to say gods, but let's refer to them as the Seven, obviously. I always kind of go back and forth in that regard, but... It's like, he's going to need her, like, because I was warning, like, yeah, we have at least one of those blades that could hurt, um, and in fact, sever the soul between, uh, the Seven and their respective Kenj, and he wants her talent to use it on him, because she has to be the one to open the portal, but obviously, she doesn't want to do that, it's like, there's got to be another way, but it's like, this is the only way he's found, it's like, he had to find the world itself, and he wants to give the Kenj back, the Kenj will maintain all his memories, and so, once, like, the time comes, she'll know exactly where to, like, send them when the time comes. So, obviously, everyone's orchestrating getting everything ready uh, as the seven are approaching. And, obviously, we revisit the conversation about the Kavi. It's like, Ren is just kind of like, we need to save them. They are a species of their own. But, obviously, Talon brings up Aster's worry of, like, right, what did Marvin do when he woke up? Did he not hurt people? Who's to say that the copy won't do the same? It's like, no, we have Marvin to, like, teach, like, we can teach them wrong from right, and Marvin, they'll listen to him, because at least we'll have his advantage of, he's one of them, so he'll be able to, like, quell a lot of that, and kind of have them, like, on our side, but obviously for talent, it's still too much of a danger. And even Ren brings up a point later on. It's like, if the Kavi aren't worth saving, then why are we any better at worth saying they're sentient beings that, that are, they're sentient living beings. They have just as much right to live as anyone else. But obviously Aster still comes from a, a perspective of like them being an inferior creature because they were made to be mindless slaves. Whereas like humanity, you know, it's like, that's, that is like so cold hearted from his perspective to think like that i think it's just but it's like yeah like you know your 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 kin look at humans the same way as just insects so like the fact is you're looking down on these species like once again and i think that's the interesting thing that it shows like he's not fully above it he just happened to choose a species that he he fell in love with and cared for but it's like in his mind it's like no humans had their free will their intelligent all that they were able to build and do but the kavi were made specifically to be enslaved to be controlled they're they're a weapon essentially and that's the fact is that he sees him that way but then marvin stands up to him and it's like then we will go against the masters like we don't serve the masters anymore and in that moment he's almost like wow you're defying everything that you were what's what was kind of in your genetics and i'm like you should have more common ground with marvin than anyone else going against your nature of like you betrayed your own siblings but for him it's still like no like it's still kind of too much of a risk but talent's like no I'm not going through with this plan. Like, we're not going forward with it unless I know there's a means of helping the Kavi. And so, Aster reluctantly agrees. Obviously, for him in the grand scheme of things, this plan is foolhardy. It's every, like, there's a good chance there's failure. There's a lot of danger, like, them succeeding. He's even saying, like, a lot of them might die. There's only a handful of them. There's only three warriors because, you know, Mutt's not, well, technically four because Mutt's a warrior. But, like, the main ones standing in front of him were Talon uh Garrett and Zed, but it's like yeah, Ren and um Janzo aren't worries, but also like Luna is there too, so that makes it a stout five warriors. So but it's still the plan of Janya needs to res give them their power. But the thing is Vorta's not gonna wait to put the um uh Navi Spore in them, so it's kinda like yeah, you won't even have a moment to breathe in between. You need to get you need to get to uh, her before she spreads the Navia spores, kind of like the issue. So that that, that timing of that has got to, you know, is a very small window. Um, 
obviously there's a conversation about well before this was the conversation between Garrett and Talon of like we got to make it through this like this is going to be something like they've made it through a lot of scraps before but this is going to be on a whole other level and it's like you know we both have to make it out of this because Garrett's like you can't like squirm your way out of like getting married and because for her it's like she's doing this alone but he's like no you're not alone you've got all of us she's like yeah but when it comes to this I won't even have um and when it comes to opening this portal like what if I can't it's like no like you can like when it comes to saving this realm time and time again she's come through in the end and just you know they believe in her and know that she can do this she's proven herself time and time again but the time has come as the seven approach well the six and the six become whole now that Aster's with them and he has to kneel before them which Aster and I wonder was this a last plea or was it like some final deception and maybe there was a little bit of a plea being like well because I think he was dead set on killing his siblings anyway because he he can't guarantee they won't try to come back to this world so he's like Guys, let's we we can find another world that's of uh, green and lush that's not inhabited by people. Like obviously, like it's there's a multitude of realms that we've never really been to or explored. But it's like there's so many worlds out there. We could go to one of them, but it's like no, they want to go to this one. They they're specifically going to stay here because like oh, there's so much life to conquer and destroy and make this world ours. But I think it's also like twofold because like there's a part of them is like. Uh, screw that. We're going to take over this world just because you care so much about it. It's just like you're the betrayer. You you know, it's like they're disgusted. But like, how could you betray your own kind for all? Like, oh, look at what these humans live in. So obviously Talon's talking to Luna about like, yeah, breaking the switch if the time comes. Because like it's like, Luna's like, how would I know the time comes? Like, you will. Just kind of trust your instincts. As I think a, as a dragman. Um, she has a very good instincts. I mean, I think in general, just all what she's had to grow up. And face like she just naturally has good instincts. So, uh, Talon's trusting her. So they put the plan in the action, and just as uh, they are reviving the, um, just as they are reviving the um, Kavi, and um, in that moment, you know, Talon ends up killing um, Aster and ends up um, getting the Aster Kinge. And then, uh, first one through, cause I, it's like, oh, Janya, bring back Aster. But it's like, nope, she gets, I was like, once again, gotta take out the healer first. And she gets removed from the equation. Then the teleporter gets the, and I'm glad Zed was able to be the one to do it. Cause it's like, yeah, that was for Nedra. I'm like, yeah, yeah. Cause those were probably like, they're the two most annoying people to kind of deal with. And cause obviously we saw early on just having the void open for a period of time, seconds at most, like it was already freezing on. Cause even like, he was like, do not stick your hand in there. It will freeze before you even realize it. And we see that by the time, like the teleporting one, I wish Mutt could have been the one to do it. Cause obviously what it represents of like, right. You're the one that has Tobin's kinch and everything. But in that moment, it's like, the moment she goes through, Janya's already frozen. She's reaching out and freezes instantly. So it's like, yep. I was like, all right. It's two, technically three down already because of Aster. So, um, sadly, uh, Vorta was able to like control Marvin with a uh, Navi Spore. But then you also have um, Golu uh, being able to control not only Zed, but because obviously him and... Um, her, uh, Talon and Garrett are trying to fight, uh, but it's like, right, uh, he can only control one of us at a time. He's like, what makes you think that's like, once again, she's under the impression about, because this is our first time seeing it, like, Golu, could, I'm wondering what the full range of that is. Um, because of what it's because she doesn't realize, like, she forgets, like, right, they've all got amplified abilities. When people have the Kinjas, they're only using a fraction of of the true power, like, once they go back to, like, their original bodies, then their full potential is unlocked. So, like, who knows how many people he can control at once like that. So, he's had control of, um, Garrett as well. So, unfortunately for him, he didn't know this at the time. But it's like, Garrett and Zed are good, but Talon's better. Like, dude, without even, like, no weapon, because her sword gets stuck at one point in time, just, like, the, the way she corrals them, the way to back and forth, it's, like, doesn't even, like, yeah, it helps having a weapon, but even, like, kicks in, like, because obviously she's trying not to kill them, so she's just defending herself, but it's, like, even, like, playing, like, a little bit of, um, evasive de defense, like, she's still running circles around Zed and, um, Garrett, so it shows you, like, just how, um, 
good she is. Um, also, like, before all that, like, Luna had got her out of, like, um, that place, and they sealed it up, and, like, Luna with the arrows got a few broken ribs, and, like, her arm got burned, but luckily she's alive. I was like, oh, that could have that could have gone uh, very badly. So, you know, but Luna's still even hurt before she even passes. She said, nah, I can still be helpful. Just let me, like, rest for a moment. So, uh, while that's happening above ground, below ground, um, the... Uh, Kavi have awoken, but sadly Marvin is controlled, so he's like, the masters say kill them, so all of them, and you got Mutt doing his thing, bam, bop, bopping everyone back, uh, I even love it, ooh, sorry about that Marvin, and you know, so that was about to turn into like a full-blown, like, oh, like, lock the doors and hide, the zombies are coming, almost a uh, horde moment in that, um, and it's like, luckily they were able to seal the door, but they just started crawling up the wall very i guess daisy-esque uh not daisy world war z uh which i've n still never seen that movie um nothing against it i just i still have it I'm not the biggest movie person once again but they are kind of well i was about to say they were trapped but it's like no like the fire uh one of the seven he was he burned his way through to like the top so that's why some of them are already top side but um Luckily, while they're dealing with that, and I love that it's kind of like they worked their way around it because it's like, oh, you guys can't kill us because I didn't know. Th I thought he was 313 because he was number 313 of like the Kavi. It's like I didn't realize like, oh, he was a high ranking officer. Guess it lucked out for you guys that he's the commanding officer. So all they had to be like, oh, your commanding officer didn't actually give you the permission to kill us. He said kill us. But the fact of the matter is he's not here to actually tell you to continue doing it. So are you going to defy him? Because if you do, he's going to get angry and the other Kavi's kind of back down from that. So that gave them a moment to breathe while everything's happening topside. So obviously, like, um, I love that Golu got, like, very cocky. And he's just like, oh, I, um, you, you, I'm not going to let you, like, you think I'm going to just step through the portal. It's like, I ain't got to worry about it. She kicks Garrett and Zed out of the way and activates the, the thing that they were setting up earlier, the log, and ends up very Home Alone trap-esque. I was like... Yeah, got him. And now that he's going through the portal, it's like it severs his control over everybody. So I was like, right, let's get to it. Three gods left versus the three of us. I was like, I like our odds. And it's just like this badass moment of them approaching them. But they brought up something interesting at the very end of like, oh, you think like it's like because Astra made a point to say not one of them can survive because it needs to be all seven or it won't matter. And now we kind of get a little context as to why, like what that means in the grand scheme of things, who knows? But essentially, uh, they have a way of guess like procreating or like like it's like we don't need like we can make new brothers and sisters. I'm like, is that how like have you guys done that in the past? Like, is that why like is that suggesting like these aren't their original bodies? Like they probably like take their souls and possess other beings of some sort. Like maybe like maybe they maybe there was actually a lot more of their species left until they kept like hopping from body to body like that, or maybe they like. Once they've like they they fully possessed of uh, the soul of them, like how like, I mean it's just an interesting thing to think about because we'll never get an answer to it. But I am curious like how they would have like continued like, I get I mean it's just like I mean the the um their kin are essentially their souls like all they would need to do is find a new body. But I'm wondering would that that new body stay the same and then just be like oh like the soul of the seven exists in them like you know how would that be any different from like technically when, when the kinjas are just regular regular people but yeah i mean it, it turns into like a, a going toe to toe with everybody um always got to avoid the uh, was it terra the one that has the death kinj um luckily the the fire kinj dude got it hard which i'm like yeah, this is for Felista. It's kind of sad that, like, her own situation led her there, but it's still kind of sad in the end. And so, um, it, it just, it's nice kind of them getting their comeuppance because they've been so, like, arrogant thinking they're top dogs and now their numbers are whittling down. Especially at the end when Vorta was kind of, like, getting scared because, like, yeah, like, uh, the red one got, he got taken out, um, got pierced on both sides and then got pushed into the portal um, Terra got, got, well, with a combination of, um, Luna popping up to help, and, um, uh, 
Talon finishing him off, and then it comes down to Vorta. But yeah, she has a telekinesis, but Talon comes through and lands the final blow, and just like, yeah, nothing lasts forever. And since her throat, and I'm like, they're all gone. They're, it's like day one, you know? It all worked out in the end. And I love, um, you know, it's like, you know, it's like, oh, see, now we have no excuse not to get married. We're both alive. And I love that Luna's just like, ah, oh, he doesn't deserve her. And then, you know, Zed be like, no, I think he actually does. And I'm curious, like, on some level, is it like, because I thought it was like, is that just like Luna being super protective of like, you know, because even she's like, yeah, like, I think uh, Garrett's handsome and stuff like that. And it's like, don't ever tell him I thought like, that he's actually a pretty cool guy and everything. Or I wonder, is it kind of, Almost like Janzo to some extent, you know. Janzo for a long time had a crush on Talon, so I was wondering if it, like, if there was something like that with Luna. Like, does she actually kind of like Talon? It might just be a thing of like, oh yeah, I like you, but maybe not like you like that, or maybe it is. Whatever the case may be, and she's, and it's just like she's like whatever to Zed. She's like, uh, I'm her. I'm gonna get a drink. He's like, Are you actually even old enough to drink? She's like, I'm old enough to beat you a doctor. Uh, so that was kind of cool. And. um Obviously, like on the um, down below, we had luckily. Uh, it's like the masters are going. It's like wait, they are. We it worked out. It's yeah. And Marvin's like yeah. Like going forward, we we don't have to like serve the masters. We serve ourselves. We we live for ourselves. And I love that. Like they kind of do like a hand sign of just like united they are. And I love that uh, Janzo tries to do it, and then like Rand slaps his hand down like stop it. So. And then we skip to a month later and just, like, see uh, Black Blood, uh, just humans, as well as Kavi all gathered together. And it's just, like, you see, like, uh, Nyla shows up because she's not going to miss the wedding. And Mutt's so happy to see her. Even Love later on when he's crying. And it's, like, um, the tissues and everything. Um, Zed gets sent to go check on um, Talon. He's like, yeah, I'll do it. He's like... Garrett, you've got the rest of your life to worry about where um, Talon is. And then you see, like, Talon drawing, like, you know, Gwen and just being like, yeah, save their realm again, you know. It's just not as fun without you, you know. And obviously misses her. And it's like, I'm with Garrett. I'm, I am I wonder how you would feel about it. And Zed's like, she'd be happy for you, you know. It's like, come on. I, I enjoy you torturing the poor guy, but go ahead, you know. It's time to go get married. She's like, I'm ready, I think. And so she has to go prepare, and then um, Zed comes back and kind of shrugs his shoulder, like, I don't know. Because Gary's getting a little worried, but then Talon comes out looking immaculate, obviously. Um, I don't, the actress Jessica Green is, like, ridiculously beautiful, by the way. Like, I don't know if I've ever talked about that before, but it's just like, uh, she, but like, like her outfit in that moment, too, is just, like, stunning. Like, she's always been beautiful. Blah, 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 ignore me. But... I just, I, I love that moment, just, you know, it's just like, right, kind of being bound together for life and everything, and all the people she cares about, like, because she's, because that was a big thing going into this final battle for her, it's like, she lost a lot of people she loved, she lo lost her family, um, her mom, her brother, like, her village, she lost her, um, I mean, I, like, despite everything, it's like, the, uh, the blacksmith kind of was, like, the closest thing to, someone else that she cared about than like losing Gwen, you know? And so they, they've lost, they lost a lot this season to, uh, Felista, uh, Nedra, Tobin, you know, um, in a grand scheme of things, but it's just like everyone, luckily she has who she has around her. She was able to protect the people that she has left. And so, you know, it, it's a beautiful moment, especially when we kind of, like, get scenes of everything between Talon and Garrett over the series from the beginning, the first meeting to where they are now. I'm like, that's beautiful. Because I'd actually uh, skipped over it, but they did, like, give a proper burial to Aster because it is like, right, this is our ancestor, like, you know, our first ancestor, like, you know, and they want to give him a proper burial because Talon initially wanted to give the Kinj back to resurrect him. But Aster was against that because, like, not one of them can survive or it, it could still spell doom. So they, I, I was like, oh, you're just going to, I was like, are you going to send him? Like, I was almost thinking, like, maybe they're going to send his body to a different world. Because I think as long as he doesn't have his kin, it won't worry, have to be an issue. But maybe, like, eventually, like, maybe, like, you're worried, worried about sending him to some other world that maybe something could happen and he could, like, you know, so it's, like, better safe than sorry, and maybe on some level, he, if he was going to be buried, I guess, in, despite everything, I'm sure he would rather be with his siblings, so, 
You know, it's like, right, you know, you deserve a proper burial. You, you deserve, I think, it's the very least for all that you've done for us. Like, we, the Black Bullets wouldn't even be here without you. This world right now, everyone together wouldn't be here without him. So it's giving him a proper send-off. And it's interesting that Talon, at the end of it all, is the only one that has the Kinj left. And I'm curious, like, what that's going to be like, you know? Because all the other Kinjis are lost. Like, there's no, like, oh, let's go back. It's like, no, that's a frozen death land. Like, you step in there, you're dead. There's no, like, you know, so it's like, no retrieving them, but, like, her Kinj. And I'm assuming, like, whatever future generations, it will, they will carry that on. I don't know. I, I think it's kind of nice, especially considering, like, it's been passed down in the family regardless. So I think that's just kind of a nice thing to think about it. Just like, right, like, the tradition will continue with, with you know, Talon and um, Garrett's kids eventually. Um, but back to the wedding. It's just like, yeah, that moment, just like everything they've been through. And it's like, yeah, we'll be together forever, you know. Uh, bind, bind themselves together forever because you know it's like you know the Astro will always be with her too in that regard too of like yeah um he will be down that family line because she is a reminder of the first woman he ever fell in love with um but also like i said it will it'll continue i think and I, I like to believe on some level too because of how long the kinj has been and will continue to be with talon that a part of her is going to get carried down the line like throughout their family and everything so Obviously, like, this is a step forward in many different directions, obviously, for the Kavi, but also the Black Bloods. This isn't the end for them now knowing, like, right, Black Bloods and humans mixing together. That's how we, like, they're, like, the the seven, um, well, Astra in particular, mixing with the human is how we came to be. So it's like, we can continue the blood, Black Bloods. We aren't the last of our kind, you know? It's just like, this is just the beginning, a new way, like, a new pay, a, uh, path has been paved of, like, you know, replenishing that um their species so there's still hope for them at the end of the day um but obviously it's like like i said mutt crying up a storm uh and even nyla finally got like oh you and warlita best of luck uh i love uh Genzo being so happy for her. he's just like you know it's like my truest best friend is happy i mean granted you know getting married is like granted you're getting married to like a brood like him but you know as long as you're happy i'm happy and it's just like oh this is like the second best day of my life it's like well what's the first one he's because i love she was even like of your life he's like yes but it's like yeah the first thing is like when uh um ran told me she was pregnant but then he's like also like well i guess Oh, this will be a close second. Don't tell anybody. Well, I guess it'd be third, considering like I love. Uh, well, when uh, when uh, Ren told me she loved me, and I was just like, oh, I love it. Just like celebrating, like hugging, like Zed and Garrett hugging it out. Obviously, uh, Talon hugging with Lita and uh, Luna, and it's it's just nice. And then. Um, Zed presents her the crown because I think they finally talked about it and I think they probably finally wore her down of like right I'll do this I'll 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 be like you know she wasn't ready at the beginning but after everything this step forward of a brighter future for everyone doing what she can she saved the realm time and time again and it's like right I'm wondering what they finally said to kind of convince her but she does take the crown and it's like whether it's black blood humans or Kavi we are one people. The fact is that, um, and I will do for, I will spend all of my life will be dedicated to doing what's right by everyone. And, you know, everyone's like, you know, Garrett kneels down and everything, but it's like, get up silly. You're the king. So it's hell, you know, um, cause it's like, right. I might not be as wise as Rosman, but I would do my best, you know? And I think she has a good circle of people around her to compensate for that. So it's just, it's a nice and beautiful uh, shot to, uh, in the, in the series off with. So I think that's nice. Like I said, I, I wasn't aware that this was going to be the series finale. So doing a little Googling, I did find out that it's not like this was, they went into this knowing it was the final season. Cause I didn't see anything initially saying that. Granted, like I said, I've, I've ended up not seeing a lot of promotional material for it, but I didn't hear or see anything about this being the final season. It turns out it's because the CW just opted not to bring it back for a fifth season. But I think it still works out because I think this is actually a really great series finale. Everything wraps up really nicely. Um, I am kind of bummed. I feel like, I don't know. It's always going to be the thing of like, well, what if? Like, what would a fifth season have looked like? Maybe there's details out there. What would have went down? Maybe, maybe not. But I'm also curious, 
like, because I always, because I'm not well versed in like productions and, you know, TV and movie magic. So, like, I'm always ignorant to know whether or not, oh, were changes made last second to give it a proper ending? Or, like, did something, was something changed or something like that? Or is this exactly the way it was meant to be? Because I'm wondering, did they do a little bit of like The Magician? So, if you're unaware, when The, the Magicians, because some of the writers, I believe, talked about this, is that. They weren't sure if they were going to come back for a sixth season. So the season five finale of The Magicians was written in a way that it could serve as a series finale if it needed to. Or as a season finale, you know, just depending on the circumstances. Sadly, it ended up being a series finale. But I'm wondering, is that the same thing for this? Like, was this season crafted just to be like, it could be the final season. But if we get another chance to do something else, we have another story we can tell. But if, if this ends up being it, we have... Uh, actual way to wrap things up so like because they didn't set anything it's not like oh it leaves on the cliffhanger it's like no but i guess it's like a future seat like I, I mean i guess at the end of the day a season five would have been like okay this is uh talon and you know garrett's reign and also like the you know three different species living in like the outpost but i feel like taking down the gods is like the biggest achievement they've done and i think like this like like i said whether it was intentional or not i feel like it it was a perfect storyline to go out on. So I still would have loved to see like, you know, once again, I'm always going to want something, something to be like, no, this is the final season. I read something to go into it knowing it's the final season, not necessarily something becoming the final season after the fact, because it's like, oh, you didn't get renewed for it. Like some a network being like definitively like, okay, uh, you're getting one more season. Like I prefer that because you know to put all your eggs in like right this final basket. Not You can leave some things unanswered, but at the very least, you know, to put it all out on the table, like, you know, and wrap things up, you know, to the best of your abilities and stuff like that. And I think they did a fantastic job. There's, like, obviously the things that, like, oh, man, I'd love to see, like, what the future holds. Like, Ren and Janzo and parents. Like, I'm sure that's stuff we would have gotten in Season 5. But I still think it is a very satisfactory enough ending. Like I said, there was no, like, full-blown loose ends. It's just kind of like, oh, man, what would have been next is all that is. But I think it, it, it serves as a satisfying series finale. Like I said, I am sad to... Um, see it in like i said it came completely as a surprise because probably if i was watching a lot of the promotional material like like you know because I, I was watching this on the cw app so i missed a lot of that so i probably would have seen like oh this next episode of series finale so i would prepare myself i only know this because like i got like you know linked to an article talking about obviously the air date for like supergirl series finale and then also the outpost i was like wait the outpost i was like this next episode's the final episode so yeah that's a whole thing but regardless of it all I've, I've really enjoyed this series, and uh, to me, it's just got better and better as the series progressed. It's, you know, a lot of tears, a lot of laughs, a lot of, like, action, adventure, and just fun. Uh, but I, um, yeah, I, uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm really glad to have been on this journey from the very beginning to where we are now. And it's even more befitting with the way, you know, like I said, the scenes between Garrett and, um, uh, talent at the very end, like seeing the beginning of their story to where they are now, it, it just it fits that even more beautifully. But uh, uh, like always with these type of situations, I am uh, I uh, I'm thankful to the creators for bringing this amazing show to me and it, to everyone else that enjoyed it. I am uh, I wish everyone, cast and crew, uh, everyone involved with this show, uh, the best of uh, luck in their future endeavors. You know so. But I, I think I've kind of rambled on enough. But uh, really, that's all I want to talk about. To the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, will I to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and goodbye.